after my video on the Libre Boot and Gnu Boot situation, the story got a little bit of attention. There was this giant thread on Hacker News, and also this post over on Slashdot, which had a fairly big thread as well. Now, I sometimes forget just how many people now watch this channel, but after that video came out, Neox, the person who sent the email to Leah, got in contact with me over on Mastodon. I also spoke further with Leah as well, and I stand by that original video, and whilst Neox doesn't agree with some of the framing I had, the disagreements we had were up for interpretation as opposed to being complete factual errors. What I want to do today is provide additional context on what happened and why it happened. I've asked both parties involved, and they are totally fine with me sharing parts of our private conversation. So the first thing we need to cover is the biggest issue, the email. This email, no matter how you try to frame it, looks really bad. Yes, the GNU trademark does need to be defended, but all of the parties involved here knew each other, and a less nuclear option could have been used to go and deal with the problem. However, Neox says the email was sent as a retaliation to a prior action taken by Leah. So at one point, Libreboot.at was hosted on SourceHut. SourceHut is created by Drew DeVault, and it was hosted on the main instance, the one run by Drew DeVault. Neox says, Leah contacted Drew DeVault, asking him to shut Libreboot.at down, raising a trademark violation towards Libreboot. SourceHut banned us the week that followed, leaving us without a working website, continuous integration, without code hosting, and without mailing lists. Leah doesn't deny this happened, saying Drew DeVault hates the FSF, and this has been known for a long time. But yes, I did contact Drew DeVault I actually wasn't expecting him to comply with my request, but he's pretty solidly on my side. There's blog posts from Drew like, The Free Software Foundation is dying. I've covered this in a previous video, and I've covered previous times that Drew has talked about the FSF as well. It's pretty publicly known where Drew stands on the current state of the organization. For the record, much like Leah, that doesn't mean that either of them hate free software, they just don't like the way the Free Software Foundation is currently being run. But Leah does disagree with one part. The Libreboot name isn't actually trademarked. I had to use other means to persuade them to rename, namely making it socially impossible for them to use the Libreboot name. Surprise releases, talking about their release early, going to Drew DeVault, and things like that. But I can understand why he thought it was trademarked. Drew sent a cease and desist demanding rename, lest they be deleted. Generally, you wouldn't assume that is just a favour to a friend. It seems more like a direct legal request. But Leah feels like she was justified in her actions, saying if I didn't respond in the ways I did, Libreboot.at would be GNU Libreboot now, not GNU Boot. Leah was worried this GNU fork of Libreboot was going to steal the name of Libreboot and her project would just be left behind. I stand by the fact that Neox probably shouldn't have sent that email to Leah. There were much better ways to deal with this situation. But as for Leah's actions, I think when it comes to out-competing them, leaking the fact their release was going to happen, mocking them, basically saying their project is absolute garbage, all of that, totally fair game. When it comes to demanding a rename for a name that you don't have a trademark for, technically they shouldn't have to rename, but it's pretty terrible FOSS etiquette to squat on someone else's name, especially when your project is trying to directly compete with it. Leah had one more thing to say about the Source Hut situation. The fact they took such a long time to set up new infrastructure is a sign of their incompetence, as opposed to any hostility on my part. I have like 10 plus different repos for Libreboot mirrors that I push to automatically. It's not like Libreboot.at was this massive established project, it was a repo on SourceHut. So really you could have just hosted your own instance of SourceHut and within a weekend have everything set back up to where you need it to be. Now a surprising thing that Neox took issue with is when I said that Libreboot.at is GNU boot. What he says on that is Libreboot.at is not related to GNU boot. It's the site of our previous project. This site will disappear soon when the first version of GNU boot is released. I asked him to clarify if both Libreboot.at and GNU boot are forks of Libreboot, to which he responded with the exact 
same message. Libreboot.at and GNU Boot are both forks of the main Libreboot project and both developed by the same developers. That doesn't sound like a separate project to me. That sounds like you gave up on the first name and then rebranded to GNU Boot. Maybe deleting the changes you made along the way, but that doesn't sound completely separate. I guess you can call it separate if you want to, but moving to a new Git repo and then forking the same project and renaming it doesn't sound separate to me. Maybe that's just a me thing though, let me know. One thing I didn't cover because I just didn't think it was relevant to that first video is why GNU Boot was being made. Here's what Neox says. Libre Boot was not meant to be popular. It was meant to be fully free and be a label. Leah created OS Boot to be more popular, support more boards, be an easy way to install Core Boot. This is why our fork is needed. There are people that just want fully free and nothing else. No blurred situation. Libre Boot had been released and was known as a 100% free distribution. The merger made things complex and made a lot of people angry, particularly in Parabola, Hyperbola, Trisquil, and pure OS communities. But also for whistleblowers, people who need maximum freedom and choose their hardware based on compatibility with Libre Boot and who, because of the merger, think the hardware is unreliable. Libre Boot was known, and still is unfortunately, as a totally free BIOS software distribution, so a machine running Libre Boot is supposed to be completely reliable in terms of freedom. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't respect the FSF definition of software freedom when it comes in contact with hardware. All of those ThinkPads that are marked as freedom respecting on the FSF's website when they're running something like LibreBoot all have proprietary CPU microcode running on them. This is just a fact of using an Intel or an AMD CPU. And there is no freedom given to the user by saying proprietary code baked into ROM is any more free than loading that exact same proprietary code from writable memory. However, whilst there isn't a single x86 system that is freedom respecting that can actually run Linux, I can see some value in the context of the older devices that LibreBoot can support without binary blobs to not add more binary blobs. In that case, maybe maintaining the old legacy of LibreBoot does make sense. Leah doesn't agree. The old LibreBoot was a mistake. I hate that world and I'm burning it down. Non-genuine boot, which is her joke release of GNU boot, is subterfuge on my part. It's designed to make GNU look as bad as possible. My new world offers true freedom and gives core boot to more people. Whistleblowers are better off with Libre boot due to security improvements with newer microcode. If they're using newer hardware, Libre boot automates the removal of backdoors in the Intel ME. As for angered a lot of people, my own research based on very large sample sizes indicates that only about 5% of people oppose the new Libre Boot policy. Now, she didn't share the data, where the data came from, how many people she really heard from, but judging by my own experience with the absolute extreme free software people who never want to touch a single binary blob, it seems like it is a relatively small number of people that actually care. One of the major issues brought up about GNU Boot is it was based on an ancient version of Libre Boot. This is something Neox doesn't disagree with, but he does have his reasons. We can't publish unaudited code. We have to check everything. The core boot base she uses, the eventual blobs, etc. We can't trust her on that. Auditing a code base is difficult and long. We can't use the latest Libre Boot for that reason. It would take too much time to audit, which absolutely makes sense from a development perspective. But I have to ask a question. I don't understand. If you want to fork Libre Boot and you don't have the time to audit a modern version of the Libre Boot code base, are you going to have time to catch up to where Libre Boot is? The project is six months behind, and this year has been a massive development year for Libre Boot, and there is a lot of people working on the project. Whereas with GNU Boot, it's two people, and most of the commits coming in are commits slowly being cherry picked in from the Libre Boot project, but not at the pace they're being added into Libre Boot. So it seems like the project is just going to always be behind. 
look, it's up to you to do whatever you want with your time. That's totally fair. But to me, this seems like a giant wasted effort. The final thing is the reason why the email was originally sent. Leah's joke release of GNU Boot, which she eventually renamed to Non-Genuine Boot. Neox says, It would have been better if she made patches and sent us these patches. This is better and honestly the only way for code review. Can you imagine doing a full release and sending it to Linus Torvalds, hoping he would merge it into Linux? Now the difference in this case is the goal with Non-Genuine Boot wasn't to merge it into your project. It's more like, delete your project and start with this base instead. Because there's no point starting with a six month old version of the project when here is a modern version that doesn't have any binary blobs in it that you can just go and use. I've done all the work for you. All you need to do is use it. Now, obviously Neox said that's something that couldn't really be done because they wanted to audit the code base. But I go back to what I said. If you don't have the ability to audit a modern version of the code base, I don't think you have the ability to maintain a fork of this project. In the end, if either party takes issue with anything I've said, please get in contact with me. My Mastodon DMs are open. You know what you need to do. Please, we don't need to send any emails. So, that's going to be it for me. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think this whole thing is just really dumb and it could have just been solved by better communication? Because that's what I think. <laughs> Honestly, that's what I think and Yeah, if you like the video go like the video if you really like the video and you want to become one of These amazing people over here check out the patreon scrubs to leave pay linked in the description down below That's gonna be it for me and I Don't want this to be another red hat. Let this be the final video Yeah.